gentlemen, you are more than welcome to this another episode of the Capital Level Show brought to you this morning by Wigwam and supported in season four here by Limerick Post. Uh, hashtag keeping Limerick posted. Uh, hashtag Limerick and proud. And it's my great honor to welcome to the cafe this morning a young man, fascinating young man, zooming in all the way from the kingdom, and it is Martin Mahan. Martin, please pop in, say hello. Cheers. Good morning. Good morning, Colm, and good morning to everyone. Uh, firstly, I want to thank you for this amazing opportunity to be on this show. Um, I was a fan of it for a, a good while, and um, it, I always enjoyed watching it, and it was until James himself was a guest on it that I really, really sat and properly um, started enjoying it and appreciating it. And then, oh, Wonderful. Wonderful. We, we appreciate James and we appreciate you being here. So just cheers with your coffee mug. Do you have a coffee mug to say cheers with? Cheers. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, let me just tell you a little bit about Martin before we invite the man in, in himself. Uh, his name is Martin Mahan, you're aware of that. Um, he's an actor, writer, traveller activist and mental health activist. Really fascinating stuff. I'm really looking forward to, to figuring out what all that means today for you, Martin. Uh, he goes on to say that he writes plays for theatre and for camera. Uh, he gives mental health speeches at conferences and he works with local traveller travel, groups, including the local traveller company as vice chair. Says he started acting when he was in his teens through Sheem Satira and started working with travellers when he won National Traveller Pride Award. Go you, congratulations. Uh, how many people do you work with? Depends on different productions and meetings, varies from six to 30. Sounds very much like the Coffee at 11 show. So, <laughs> wonderful stuff, Martin. Um, he goes on to say that uh, Martin is an actor and a writer from the travelling community and also takes pride at being a mental health activist and traveller rights activist. Uh, per performing talks and doing speeches on radio and conferences on both of those very important matters. Uh, one day he hopes to run for office, looking forward to hearing about that, to make sure the traveller's rights uh, have equal rights. And he is currently vice chair of Kerry Traveller Movement. And something nobody knows, he says, I'd love to learn how to jump out of a plane and would <laughs> like to run for office. I can help you with the first one. <laughs> and we we'll talk about that some other day, right? Mark Mann, it really is a great pleasure having you here and thank you for taking the time out. To thank you for having me. Thank you so much. I'm so delighted cafe. and very grateful. I think we're the ones that are, are grateful. <laughs> let, me, let me just come here. We'll ask a couple of questions because Go ahead. I, I say to all of our guests, we can Google you and we will, right? And Eamon's going to put some links in so we can check you out. Uh, so we, we will very quickly be able to get to know the man that we see in front of us today. What we'd like to do is go back to the very start, if you're open to that, and just bring oh, us through those early years. You're, you're in Kerry now. Were you born in Kerry? I was. I grew up here in Tilly. Um, I, I lived here all my life. This is my town. Um, so Tilly is, is where I would call home, you know, um, in regards to answering that question. So, yes, I am from Tralee. This is my local town. This is my town where I went to school, primary school and secondary and college as well. And working. Okay, so so t tell us about the, the family. Tell us, you know, where where are you? How many brothers and sisters? What's going um, um, My well, I, I'm the eldest of four. So my, my sister Mary then is the third. This is just before me. Then my brother Charles, and then my my youngest uh, Francis. And what what ages are they now? Francis is eleven. Charles is sixteen. Mary is twenty four, and I'm the head of the table. Um, are you, are you going to share us? Or oh, did you say 26? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were trying to hide that. And we, we don't no, know. no, no, no. There's, there's no point doing that. <laughs> let anybody hide on the Cocker 11 show. Uh, happy days. That's lovely. Thank you for that. Um, and, uh, and, and school, what was school like for you? Um, to be honest with you, primary school for me was incredible. I was very fortunate to go to a very mixed, um, different races primary school here at Holy Family. And we had a really, really great principal, John O'Connor, at the time. And from there, it was when I started realizing that like, being a traveler wasn't so different because there were so many different mixed race kids there who were so friendly and so welcoming and warming that I didn't feel that I was out of place at all. You know, so and that school was so warm and so it, 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 it helped me get some friends. It helped me find myself as a person. It helped me understand that. People from different countries can come here and be accepted and understand all of that because I was only 10 and 11 and not really understanding all that kind of thinking. And so I owe that school a lot. I owe that school a lot. It was, they did nothing but treat you equally, treat you the same as everybody else and nothing but education and love and learning how to play sport and everything that you would associate with primary school. 
that's what that primary school was. And there was after school care and there was teachers that would give you a number if you wanted to ring them for homework at any time, give a personal number to your parents. So there was a lot of great stuff. I'm very fortunate to come from that. Well, do you, do you know what's striking, if I may, a couple of things about that is, first of all, your, 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 your delight in, in reflecting back on those yeah, years. Yeah, because it's, every time I think of it, it's just happy memories. That's just wonderful. It's really, really lovely because uh, I don't know that every child in primary school today, regardless of where they are, <laughs> uh, could well, say. Yeah. The, the, second, the second thing, and, you know, it's lovely to hear, we've heard this loads of times on, on the Coffee 11 show, um, we've heard people remember teachers by name and you remember Principal John O'Connor, you know, because that means he had, a, he had an impact on you and it would appear very... Oh, well, there's, there's a few I, I could list them, but my name, I just used uh, John as, as an overall example because he was in charge of the school. But uh, I remember even my, my junior teacher, uh, Bernadette McKelligan, she was my very, very first teacher in junior infants. And I can remember back that far. That's cool. That tells you the impact. Yeah. I, could even, I could tell you even all of the first class, second class, all that. You know, that's yeah, lovely. It's lovely. I saw Sarah Ward leading the Bula bus there, uh, <laughs> Mr. Kelligan, like in, in junior infants. Um, the, 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 but there's one word that I, I couldn't help but notice in that, and it was you said it was a mixed race school. Yeah, had a really interesting turn of phrase, right? And um, you, you know, you're you're proudly from the traveller community, and it's wonderful to have you here in the cafe talking about this. I just found it an interesting use of the word race. Um, you sort of dare I say it, threw yourself into that, into that mix. There were lots of different races. Yeah, but so you, have to be, you have to be very, very careful. From my experience of working in that area, and coming from a, 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 that background myself, you have to be so, so careful as to how you would even phrase beginning that kind of conversation. Because even if you say one kind of word, just because you're not offended or it might not take it sensitively or take it a different way, somebody else will. So that's why I was very careful there to even, even say the word race. I could have said people from different countries. You know, you have to be so, so careful because you don't know what other people think differently just because you might take it late, somebody else might not. And, and Martin, it's, it's in, indeed why I reflected back on it with some trepidation because uh, I'm not 100% sure how to be politically correct. Yes, exactly. That's it. With you, representing, representing your family, representing you first and foremost as a, as a man in, in your own right, representing your family. And of course, representing your your lineage. Yes. And, uh, so, so if I if I say anything that's untoward, please accept in advance that it will be unintentional. And of course, uh, the same as myself as well. If I say something that someone is not used to the way I might phrase something or describe something, it might just be from the way I was my area have a different way of saying words or whatever particular slang, something like that. Clear me up on it and let me know. Yeah. Well, so so let's if you don't mind, since since we're there, let's let's just go a little deeper. Um, so you see, I see you as an Irishman, right? Uh, you happen to be an Irishman from the travelling community. Um, I happen to be an Irishman from the settled community. Um, you happen to be born in Kerry. I was born in, uh, is Kevin in the room? The, the real capital. I was born in the real capital, right? <laughs> Ke Ke Kevin, he's, he's not here. He's from Cork, so we, we have this thing going on. All right. Um, anyway, so, uh, yeah, so we're both Irishmen, right? And therefore, therefore in my lexicon were both from the same race and then there are others that have come to this country from different parts of the world therefore they're coming in from a different race and so am i on the right track or do you and i see it the same or do you see it differently no i i see it quite the same because i am i, I am an irish man as you would say like yourself and then when they come here they are bringing their culture and they're bringing their identity and their understanding of life and way of living and everyday life to our culture so that's their race or whatever way whatever word that we would have for it the next person might have a different word for it but it's the same scenario just described basically on a different term but yeah, no, that's, 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 I, I, i'm glad i checked it you, we, so we're on the same page 100 yes yes, so the, yes i suppose the real question i was trying to get to there was did you feel uh, uh did you feel any way different in that school by your earlier description i don't think you did but were you aware of differences between you as an irish child from the traveling community and other Irish children as opposed yes. to foreign national children yes. from yeah, um, yes I did uh, because you see holy as great as Holy Family was and as welcoming and opening as it was to all communities and uh, everything like that there was just a few incidences um, regards like there was a couple of other kids in my class as well and they would be treated dependently on how they would want to be treated like there was, for example, now I'll use an example, just to give you a story. 
there was a guy who was a bit troublesome, a bit, it was more just there for that he had to be there and not properly learning the education. And he wanted to basically finish school early so that he could get married at 13, because that's part of our tradition and our culture. So our principal at the time, John O'Connor, seen this and spoke with his family and his father and basically just moved him on then from fourth class to sixth class straight away so that he could get done and finished early so that he could go and get married because John appreciated that side of our culture and he knew then that the student wouldn't be in the area of going on to secondary school and accepting that kind of dedication to commitment to your education. He basically just said, I just want to leave. I'm getting married. Can I go up the year? And John was totally okay with it. Wow. That's... Um... I, I, I'm not aware of that tradition in your in your culture, uh, and that's an incredible story. Thank you for sharing it. Oh, you're welcome. So ev everyone was treated a bit. Everyone was treated well. Travelers weren't isolated or treated differently because of who they were. Now, of course, there always was a few incidences, maybe that you would come in contact with out in the playground, or something like that. That's out of the teachers and schools control and does not represent the school's policy whatsoever. Um, but no, I didn't feel. I didn't feel. It was there actually that I started realizing properly where the community was coming from because I was ended up there mixing in with traveler kids that I probably wouldn't mix with at all because our family would probably not be one to mix much with the families that are based down here because particularly with our family coming from Dublin and stuff like that, most of our relatives are all up there. And it was just my mom and my dad that moved down here then my dad's because my grandparents happened to set up um, a campsite in Kilbarrick, just, uh, just outside of the town. So it was just from that then that my parents decided then to put me to the school here and stay in Tralee. But we were an isolated family, like we were like alone. Our relatives were always out of the county, you know? So I got to learn. And again, that's a fascinating insight into traveler culture that I wouldn't have known, uh, you know, that, that even though you were part of a community, you were somewhat outsiders in that community. I think that's, that's really interesting. Did you say Kilbarrick? I meant to say, um, James, James would know. Um, do you know when you're near Brenneville? No, no, I'll, I'll, tell, I'll tell you why. It will come, come to me. It will come to and me. I, I, rather than fry your brain, forgive me. I, you had mentioned you'd come from Dublin as a family. Yeah, my uh, family, yes. Okay, and you'd mentioned your granny and granddad, and you'd said they'd set up a, a site in, and I thought you said Kilbarrick, which is actually where I grew up in Dublin. So I was thinking. <laughs> no, no, no. It was, it was, they were born there, and then they had moved down from Kilbarrick and set up. It's, it's, it's a... It's it's so it's I can't it's like not moil or not something like that. James was saying that, you know. see James James nodding away. He he walks past it every day. And that's it. That's what I'm saying. Very <laughs> uh, But but were they Kilbarrick originally? Seriously in Dublin? Ah uh, yeah yeah yeah. Ah, there you go. Well I was um, I grew up in a place called Tonlegi Road. Wow. Okay. By the way, which is Irish. Well, you you'll enjoy this, right? Tonlegway. Arse to the wind. <laughs> <laughs> All this it sounds like a remix of Fuck My Home. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, so anyway, Tom Legee Road in Coolock in Dublin, and it's about we, we grew up exactly halfway between the Cadbury's um, factory in Coolock Village and the fire station in Kilbarra. My auntie is still living in Coolock now. Oh, there you go. There you go. Small. She's there with her family. Very, very beautiful area. It's very respected area. It's great. It's great. Mam and dad, oh, mom and dad still live there. All right. Happy days. Well, listen, thanks. That, that, that was a lovely introduction to, to primary school, right? Another thing you said earlier, though, and I'm, I think it's worthy picking at, if you don't mind, is you start, I asked you about your schooling. You said, well, primary school was great. Does that mean that secondary school wasn't? <laughs> I was waiting for that little add-on. Um, not that it wasn't great. It's just that it was where I came into contact with proper uh, issues of a dark side, like regards racism and stereotyping and all stuff like that but I was expecting that because the school was so big the school that I went to at the time was the third biggest in the country at that time so it was some we had every, everywhere we had all Europeans and you know we, we had everything um, in in my my year at the time so it wasn't until I went to secondary school that I started I started feeling a little bit of an issue and I started understanding why do people have a problem with us and why are we feeling isolated when we are Irish citizens being isolated by Irish citizens? Do you know, that's, that's, that's was where I started wanting to change that and wanting to make a difference because I didn't like the, the continuous treatment that I was seeing over a six-year basis there of a stereotypical, I don't like you because of, you're from the Catholic community, so I'm not going to get to know you ideology, 
which is what myself was constantly coming into contact with from all different people who I never even spoke with, who would be in different classes or base classes I never even come in conversation with, I'd have no association with whatsoever, and they would completely dislike you, even though they would be Irish like you, not that being from a different nationality should regard or affect it, but I'm just saying on the fact that you'd be a, a citizen of this, you'd be an Irish citizen with an Irish pride in your heart, and they just dislike you because you're a minority or something, how they would see you. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got to well, fifth or fourth year that I was like, this keeps happening. And it's becoming a sad, sad coincidence that I notice it a lot and that I want to do something about this. And did you have that realization back as early as that in fourth and fifth year? Yeah. Yeah. It was that's when I started mixing with people who I was seeing was treating me differently completely based on the fact that I was from the traveling community and that if I would completely ignore it anymore, I would just be lying to myself and I would be and make excuses for them to say, no, it might just be they're having a bad day. They might have picked me up wrongly. Um, let me go and clear that up. Let me, I know him. I know his sister. I know her brother. Let me go and talk to him a little bit, you know? But I was like, why would I need to do that when I know that they're isolating me just because of my culture without really getting a chance to know me as a person or accept anything that comes with it? It, you know? it, it, it sounds like you had to be brave, though, to step into a conversation. You had to basically invite them into a conversation with you. Can you give us an example of how any of those chats went? Um, there was, it, it's, more, it's more the things, the elephant in the room, that the more thing that would almost be an insult to your intelligence that you don't cop these kind of things on. And it would be more the body language and it would be more the way that they would talk to you that is before you even engage in a conversation with them, they've already had this opinion of you. And that their face will say everything, particularly James can relate to that when you do a lot of acting for a long time. You start picking up on stuff in other people. It's, it's almost like a bounce off of method acting. As you start reading people in front of you, when really you've been training yourself to read a piece of someone that's on a piece of paper and you have to become that person. But when you do it for so long, you start doing it to other people without even realizing and did you ask, did you ask, sorry, did, did you find that you had a group of friends in secondary school anyway, regardless of the overall picture? Yeah. And, and uh, my best friend actually in secondary school was a, a guy that was wheelchair from birth. And he was one of the most nicest, most realist, most calm persons I've ever met. And I was so lucky and blessed to have him as a friend and to help me through those turbulent years in, in secondary school. And... But I did. I, I had a group of friends, um, and, and, and 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 that 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 boy uh, in the in the chair uh, was he from the traveling community? Or no, 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 no. Just from a local town out here. But it's the beauty in the fact that he could be in a situation like that and have a, a little disadvantage from the start, from the beginning of his life, and still would treat me so normally, better than the people there who was running and starting and playing every different sport and getting every girl and living the dream. But they still don't treat me a better person than the way that the guy in the chair would treat me. Your, yourself and this young guy in the in the chair yes. uh, obviously became close. Then did you have a group of friends around you and were they from the settled community and traveled community as well? The only thing was um, we had a group of friends around us, but some of them were, we had two friends from Czech Republic and then we had two from England and we had one from German and one, one Spanish. And we all, we were all um, kind of, how would I say, outcasts uh, of, of sort, we all were uh, not mixing well or basically run of the mill, run of the cloth, as one way you want to put it. Um, so yeah. we found solace in, in ourselves and we found peace in accepting the fact that they're not going to accept us for who we are from the start. And from basically we yeah. took that thinking and accepting that. So, sorry, Martin, it's really interesting right. from my perspective to just uh, to, to have, have this conversation because uh, your, your experience was clearly very different to mine growing up. Yeah, and, uh, I, and, I'll, and I'll go into more detail about what the exact racism, but it's just you mentioned on the, you mentioned on secondary school, so I'm just telling you my account. You know, it's, it's great, and thank you, and thank you for being so honest, yeah. And uh, no, we, no. We, we indeed have Yitka here from the Czech Republic today, so lovely to have you here, Yitka. Uh, we've got James here from, originally from England, Jer White, who's currently living in, in, in England, oh. uh, from Ireland originally, I believe, Jer, isn't that correct? Yeah, happy days, good stuff. So, so we have a mixed bag here today. It's wonderful, and we've Tim Kelly. Let's let's call a spade a spade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, listen. Um, uh, come here. Well, yeah, yes, it was secondary school was was my introduction. 
to how society would see traveler people and how how uh, you expect your life to go as a as a recent traveler in in Ireland. That was my introduction to it. And, it was, and, and did, did you did you go all the way through to to and including leaving cert? Oh yeah, you yeah, know I, I finished and I graduated um, from Mercy Montauk. So I was delighted to do that um, because there was two traveler boys in my year who left at junior cert, and most of them then it was always expected. Like it wasn't even everyone was kind of surprised sarcastically that they didn't would even go on to secondary school here because firstly that's the thing is I don't like to be when I when I do my speeches and talks I try to be as fair as I can about the situation because it, when you start talking you're always going to be criticized from the start and I can accept some of it because I know that that's what you need to expect but it's just the, if I was to say something about the traveling community and I was to delve them up and make them sound good everyone then would hit me with oh but what about the crazy unemployment what about the crazy way that they're acting with the stereotypical living off the stereotype of the bare knuckle boxing and the fighting and the selling that image out there you know so I, I when I try to talk about that I try to be fair and say look there is some bad eggs out there unfortunately there is a few in the community that unfortunately live off the stereotype that the media has created and they kind of want to use that to their advantage as a self-destruct button because okay, this is how you perceive me without getting to know me, so I'm going to do 10 times worse for it because you don't know me at all. And I don't know why they have that ideology because I've spoke with a good few of them trying to change that thinking, but it just doesn't work. So I always say that to them, that there is some out there before I go in and tell you of the good ones without just saying, yes, I am aware and I know not, no way naive to the reality of a 21st century traveler man in Ireland. I just want to tell you that there is some good as well and there's a lot of good you just don't hear it. Because the media don't want to show you that, and they never will. There's a there's a sound bite there. Twenty first century traveler man in Ireland. I love that. <laughs> uh, and, and and you might be the poster boy for it. Come here. Um, yeah. <laughs> th th this is really lovely. Thank you for th thank you for your honesty. Thank you for being here. Um, when did your interest in act? Oh, sorry. In terms of the leaving cert, and based on the 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 journey you've just brought us through, we had your friend who uh, exited at age thirteen. Because of uh, you know that it was it was part of the um, your culture. Yeah, it's he, just he was just passing down the torch. Yeah. His dad hadn't even made it to third class, and his dad had taught him in his version of education that you didn't need so much so far as an education, just yeah, yeah. as far you need to uh, uh, read and write, yeah. and that was enough. And yeah. some traveler men would be going into copper, or they'd be dedicating their careers to building or doing small as much scrap work as they can. So yeah. they would just basically need the basics of primary school. Yeah, well, it makes, makes perfect sense. You know, and, and then that's, well, I'm just trying to describe this to some people who think, oh, why do they leave so early? Yes, they do leave early, but I'm just trying to tell you, sometimes it's not their fault. It's out of their control. Well, They're hearing well, that at home from their fathers when they go but, home. But, but, but come here, you, you've, you've told it beautifully. You've explained it beautifully, right? It, it makes perfect sense when you when, now that we hear it in, in those words. And then my I'm, I'm getting to the point that, so he left at 13, yeah. Uh, a couple of the other guys left at junior search and you stayed on. So you must have been in the minority in your community or perhaps in your community uh, in Kerry uh, yeah. as, as a traveller who had decided to stay on to leaving search. Yeah, I think that the ratio they were telling us in, 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 in my work was that at least five, I think, since I graduated in, in 2012, actually went on to do the leaving search here in Tralee. Five travellers only stayed on. So, um, it, it is a thing. It, it, it's just, it's just basically down to the family, down yeah. to what part of family that they're from, and that's the thing about the culture. It's all family oriented. It's all family pride. You represent. You wear your family's name on your sleeve, and when you walk outside every day, that's how. That's what you represent. Unfortunately, okay. in the good situations and in the bad. Well, come here. Do you know what? You're representing your family beautifully here this morning. Uh, you, you know, do. please, Thank ladies you. and gentlemen. I, I think it's just, it, it's a, it's lovely to have you here. Um, I, I was I read a book called The Snowball, written by Warren Buffett, or at least it's or his words, right? And uh, it's he he talks about the ovarian lottery, and the ovarian lottery is basically the concept is it's completely entirely outside our control where we're born and into what circumstances we're born. Fact, right? We just arrive on this mode of yes. dust uh, in some set of circumstances. And so you arrived on this motor dust, uh, born to your parents, uh, the Mahans, and 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 the culture that they, the, the traveller culture that they imbued in, into you and, and showed you, also allowed them uh, encourage you 
to stay on to leaving cert. Right? So I just find that really interesting and very, you know, very positive way that yes. you happen to be born into that family because had you been born into another traveler family, you might have left at 13. Yeah, exactly. I would have left and I would have taught everything that that was totally okay because I had yeah. seen my father do it. And, yeah. you know, so. Yeah, I, I just, I, I just think it's lovely. Um, so, so you now got to leave and search, right? Yeah. At what point did acting come in and activism? <laughs> um, I, I, I always think that when I, when I, when I come to acting, I, I always, probably you're not going to expect it, but I look at it as the way that I look at, um, as I look at my faith, that interest in acting is, is like having faith in God. It's a gift. It's something that you're born with that you can't force on yourself. That's my experience anyway. Like you, you will have the natural attitude for it and go along with it and go along with everything that comes with it, putting up with the rejections and putting up with the constant, you know, because you love it and it's built in you. So that's how I see acting. It's like, it was just something that was bugging me that it, that I had from like 14 or 15, this knack or something that I, I wanted to do and watching movies over and over again, watching my favorite actors, idolizing them and wanting to be like them and, you know, putting their pictures on my wall and, then you know, and all that kind of thing. And I really, really found it then that could be something I could try. So I, I remember in, in, in third year, we, had, we every year we'd have a school, school production and that year was The King and I, uh, the musical. And... Uh, I remember wanting to act in it. Of course, it was well casted by the time I ever had an interest. But I just wanted to be around it. You know what I mean? That's what I was trying to tell people. I had this knack for it. It's not that I wanted to do it. It's the fact that I just wanted to be around it when it was happening. I needed to be there. I needed to just, I don't care what the show was. I just needed to be in there. I needed to be around it. Do you know? And then that's how I can become part of it if I'm around it for so long. So it's almost like the stereotype, you become part of the furniture. That's what I wanted for acting. I wanted to be around it, just because it was something telling me like this is this is what is for you. And I, I know it's that simple, and you probably expect a better answer. No, it no, really no, is. No, I, it really is just that black and white as yeah, to yeah. how I got into it because it was a, something in my heart, so a feeling that was just constantly reminding me of you need to go and try this. You might be good at it. Yeah. And it wouldn't go away. Cap wouldn't cap wouldn't go away. And so, so what, what, what you, so the, by the way, I want to tell you a story about that in a second, but what role did you end up playing uh, as part of the overall production team? In- I was just in, in, the, in the chorus. I was Excellent. just in the chorus. Everything was cast and I just didn't care. I just, just put me in the show. I just want to be there. I want to see you record, rehearsing. I want to see a director working. I want to hear, I want to see a producer working, you know. I just wanted to be a part of it. And that, that was then how I first got and what, into it. What year were you in, in school at that stage? I was just after finishing up my my junior circle. Oh yeah, great, good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, I was in a I was in a show as well back in the day. In uh, after after junior cert, we went into fifth uh, fifth year, and there was always a show in fifth year. So I, I was. Uh, which was like a, which was the show? Oh God, can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I'm the one asking the questions. Back in your box. <laughs> right. Um, uh, but then no, I, I, no, I actually do remember now that you've asked it, right? It was called Sing Out, right? There was this thing, this American phenomenon floating around. See, I'm I'm ancient. This was back in the 70s, right? <laughs> American phenomenon, quasi-Christian movement going around in the States. Wow, okay. Sing Out came to to uh to to Ireland and uh we, I was in an all boys school and there was an all boys school up the road, so we we got together and it was it was it was our way of mixing. So, uh, so a bit like that, I wanted to be around the show because there was girls in it, like. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, fun, fun, fun. Uh, so when you from left... From there, then. Yeah, when yeah, I left... From there, your journey into acting, please. Well, then, from there, um, I, I wanted to try and find if something was... If I could do it locally, you know? Um, and I, I wanted to try and find was there something that I could do locally and just try and get into it somehow. Because, obviously, now that I know that there is so much in Chile, but obviously with anything, you need to get into the, the ball. You need to get into the circle and get to know the heads. And once you're in that, they, everything comes more available to you, like with anything. Um, but I had to start, obviously, as Greg would say, to quote Greg Satter from the bottom. I always look at that quote and I work my way up, as he said. So I had to start at the bottom. And it was, uh, well, I was lucky to have Shim Satira here in Tralee, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal theatre and everything about it. We're so blessed to have it in Kerry, never mind in Tralee basically on our doorstep. Uh, so they have this thing there, which is still, I think, one of the best things for any course whatsoever, 
uh, it has free radicals, it's called the Free Radical Jude Theater, basically 16 to 25, uh, and you get to learn all the areas of, of performance stage, and you get to learn it every Saturday for three hours. And it's, it basically, it was getting your college course in drama studies and getting your bachelor degree, going to UCC, I could get it every Saturday here for free. Because that's the, that's the intensity that I was learning in the Free Radical Zoo Theatre and bestowed upon you from a young age, the intensity of learning about Chekhov and method acting and all stuff like that. I was crazy, like, you know? And they were like, these were people that were, the, the people in it were like, for me, in a way how they would see themselves or be proud to call themselves oddballs in a good way, it was, the, it was the radicals, we were all, and they would, that's how they would describe themselves and they would be profoundly proud of that, you know, because we had, sometimes we'd have people that would be dressed into the goth era and then we would have rockers and then we would have, you know, um, a hippie styles and we would have all different types of young people who would be drawn to wanting to join the Free Radical Duty Theater because they had the same reason as me as to somehow they want to start acting, do you know? Yeah, do, yeah. fantastic, fantastic. So, yeah. We were learning, like I found the radicals by chance, just by chance. And it was the best thing ever. It was, the, I ended up staying there. Then up until I could, I, I wasn't, I was, wasn't old enough anymore to leave. Uh, when I ran past my, my age limit and basically ran out my ticket. Okay. Um, but it was, it was the most phenomenal thing. It's still the most phenomenal thing. We put on three, three productions a year, all originally written and everything by our, our coordinator of the thing. We would do one in the, uh, for winter, Christmas time. We would do one for spring and then a, a summer finale. Yeah, that, um, that's and it was just absolutely fantastic. And you, I just got to learn so much that would save me from going to Cork here to learn. I learned so much. I learned how to learn lines. I learned how to take care of myself off the stage, how to disassociate, disassociate myself from being on stage to off stage. I learned just basically everything. And I was learning it on a weekend. You know, that's and that's what the radicals is such a beautiful whoever came up with it is just like <laughs> magnificent you know i wonder does, does james finnegan was were you involved james we'll we talk to you in a while but were you involved yes or no um not with the radicals not with the radicals okay. I, I, was just outside the I don't know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> Slightly, James, slightly. We'll have, a, we'll have a chat with James in, in a little while uh, in the Princess Shelley bit of the show. Um, really fascinating story so far, Martin. Yeah, you have me. And, you know, and then we were writing our, and then we kind of got to it, the confidence of it, because when I was getting into first year, I was like, OK, coming out of Michelle a little bit. And then I started finding that I, I was always writing stuff at home. I would always like, if someone would say something, if, so, if I would see a movie, I'd, everything is a creation of something else. But it's the way that you don't copy it. It's the beauty of it, you know. So I would I would see a movie and I'll be like, okay, I can write a play about that, but I can change it around and make it my own, you know. So I'd see a movie, but I'd be like, no, this the whole synopsis of the two hour movie would be so much betterly symbolized in a fifteen minute short play. So let me take the ending and the start and put it all together, you know. That's how I that was that's what I was learning from from that's my lovely. coordinator. Wonderful. You know? Come here, come here. I have a question to ask you. A couple, a couple of questions, if you don't mind. Right. One is, um, right, fire away. One is, as a member of the traveller community in uh, the Free Radicals, how are you assimilated? And that didn't come into uh, well, not that I know about anyway, and I hope not. Well, well, well see, I, I think you would have known. You mean you, you were I would have known. I would have been known, and that was my point about the radicals. They were all oddballs. You know, everyone was all different. Everyone was, everyone was all like they didn't care because they were being treated differently anyway by the majority of their people that they know in their life because they weren't whatever you want to call one of the cloth or whatever that means. That's they why. That's why I asked. So I was, you know, yeah. <laughs> I was curious was James was James Finnegan involved? You know, you had mentioned oddballs at the start, so. <laughs> you know now maybe he could be involved, and he could be the shadow government of it. I don't know. You just don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> he's pulling the strings in the background um, come here no but I'm, I'm glad i'm glad genuinely glad that uh you didn't experience those issues uh in in that environment so that no it, it was it was more um when i went out there with it it was more when i went public about that i wanted to be an activist and i wanted to be a writer and an actor and a, and a recognizing traveler is is when i started feeling it Okay. You know, it was when, when 2014, I, I wrote because I, 
an issue in the traveling community at the time, which was at the year that I, I wrote this, was um, how would I, and I, I don't want to, how would I say it? Basic homo homosexual like activities. I don't, I, I don't want to say it in case someone would take an offense to the word. I was no, trying no, to, no, 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 don't, 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 you, you need to talk in your way. Right? Okay, so then the, the issue of, of, of gay men in, in, the, in the community. Yeah. And obviously that was totally, un, and it's not my thinking at all, but the old fashioned heads would be against that. So traveler men would be isolated and be very scared. And unfortunately, a thing in our community is a silent killer is suicides. The, tra the commu traveling community is riddled and it's a scourge and it's destroyed our community in the last two to three years because the traveler men not being able to, because the, the media has portrayed us as this macho man stereotypical idea that we're not able and strong enough to go and talk about our feelings and our emotions, because if we do, we're deemed as unfit and we're deemed as weak even to our wives and our, and our friends who become the community. And that's what we need to destroy, like, that's what we need to change. So I, I was seeing back at then, at, at some three or four, the nicest men ever, hard workers, by the way, who will be working five days a week. But they, were, they were from the gay community, but they were travelers. And I saw them continuously not being able to come out and to tell their families. So I wanted to make, I wrote a play about two gay traveler men dealing with real life issues instead of the whole stereotypical idea that you'd even see of a gay character was all fluffy and fluffy and you can already make the character up in your head when you would hear of a gay character because you already have a stereotypical idea as to how they would act. So, you know, so I wanted to go away from that and show that this is a real people but also these are traveler people. So I'm showing you these are real, even more real people as to how you don't think that we're actually real people. You know, so one of them was had a drug debt, and the other one then was dying of cancer, but had not told his partner that that he was suffering from cancer. And the other guy then was just about to break the news to him that he was in he was in debt with loan sharks and drug dealers. So this was the play that I wrote, and I was showing it, and myself and um, an actual uh, Kieran O'Hara Smith, I'll give him some recognition. Uh, he's a gay actor. Um, from Tralee and from the, from the Free Radicals and uh, me and myself, my, I brought this, the script to him and me and himself performed it together and it was from that then that I got selected to win the National Traveller Pride Award and it was from there that I was able then to properly get my foot out there and start getting on the activism and get myself out there as a, as a recognisable traveller actor and as, as a traveller activist. The National Travel Pride Awards is a traveler only award ceremony in, with different categories. Um, and the certain people in the country are awarded it every year based on their achievements. So when they had heard and that I had wrote a play about that covering those topics, they had reached out to me and I was fortunately enough to win that award from uh, for, for drama and entertainment. So I was very, very blessed and lucky. Well, come here. That, that's just wonderful. Congratulations. Really Thank you. wonderful. Thank you. Um, I mean, that takes guts. That takes guts, right? I mean, you know, you've you've described um, your primary school. Uh, you know, you, you described that it was a very happy place for you, but you also were able to tell us that, regardless of that fact, there was this sort of isolationist thing going on where yourself, your little friend in the wheelchair, a couple of others from non-Irish people formed together because you were, to a large extent, outsiders, despite the fact that you were an Irish. Boy, right? yes, yes, and uh, and then secondary school was challenging. Free radicals seems to have been um, a place for you to begin to learn to express yourself. Oh, yes, so much, yes. so much. I, I'm just forever, forever, forever grateful to those people, and I always will be. And yeah. they still stayed with me in, throughout my throughout my life, even when I finished with them. It was then um, it still managed to stay stay in contact with me, you know, and uh, my. my um, my, I, I, I was privileged enough to uh, be invited to do a TEDx talk in Dunleary in 2019, and the topic of my talk was uh, uh, bullying. Uh, Stephen's story matters, and I spoke with this boy <clears throat> who had been bullied through secondary school because he was gay. And wow. he woke up one day, age 15, and he decided the pain had to stop on this particular day. Right? And of course, at 15, that's a very uh, that's a that's a tightrope age, right? Um, Thankfully, he decided to do something positive about it and he went and tackled his bullies and had a conversation, which was probably the braver thing to do, given the circumstances. Um, and, and the story has a happy ending. But that 
boy Stephen is my son. Okay. And that was the thrust of the te TEDx talk. So my, my son, Stephen, I refer to him until very recently as a beautiful gay man living in London until he moved back home. <laughs> He's now a beautiful gay man living back with Mammy doing a mass <laughs> in UL, right? Uh, but he's beautiful. He's not the only one, Colin. There's thousands oh, of no, friends no, back no, home no, that no, moved no, back home that went back home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Mammy's love us. I have a story I could go there with my old man. But no, come here. It, brave stuff, Martin Mahan. Brave stuff. Uh, props to you, my friend. Um, who were your hero actors, by the way? You mentioned a few hero actors. Um, well, uh, I could talk about this all day now. <laughs> um, but obviously, one of the few comes to mind. Obviously, uh, Eastwood would be a, an idol of mine. De Niro, Pacino, of course, that's the standard answer. Those are, those are gods to me. Those are the Mount Rushmore of acting. We want to put there. And uh, but look, uh, locally, um, uh, the right, the, the head of the Free Radical Jew Theater. I'll put some respect on his name. Uh, Neil Flynn, uh, coordinator of that, and just a fantastic man. I mean, a fan like he he was the one that got me into writing because all his pieces is so original and it's just this black black Irish comedy that you just have to love like you know and that the things that only an Irish person would get like he's perfect for that kind of writing you know and he's done so much for me he's done so much for my confidence he's done so much for me as a writer he's done so much for me as an actor that I just have to give him give him some respect and I even mention him in the art eating and I give him some proper clout like Neil is Neil Flynn for me is a hero. Like yeah. he broke down so many boundaries for me, and he's art. He's he's writing his top of the range. It's it's just immaculate, and I'm, I'm so proud to be a student of his. That's yeah. all I say. Lovely. And you know what? He, he, I hope he gets to hear this. Yes, thanks, thanks, Yitka. Hope he gets to hear this because <laughs> you, you named him Neil Flynn in there with Eastwood Pacino. And, <laughs> and can I maybe give a shout out to a personal hero of mine as well, uh, John uh, John Connors. Uh, for breaking down the stereotype and the wall of, and getting us out there. And I can just salute him forever for that because he'll always be a treasure to every traveler person for, for yeah, a great, great. couple of years. And probably Reese Myers as well, Jonathan Reese Myers, if you know him, pretty famous actor himself, would be a big fan, be a fan, big fan of his work. I've seen him in Elvis Presley, he's fantastic as Elvis Presley and as King Henry VIII. And I love actors that can switch it up with different areas. and. You know, so I give him a recognition too. Happy days, good stuff. But you know what? The, the one thing about all, all of those men that you just mentioned is they're all individuals and all got their own particular style and something they bring to the roles. And, and, and you're in the same ilk. You know, you're absolutely unique. Don't ever, and I know you won't be, but don't try to be any of them. Just be you. Be the oh, very thank you. Thank you. Person you. Okay, act activism. Um, activism out there talking about mental health issues. What, yes. what, about, what are you doing? Um, that came about um, from uh, from winning the, the award and when I won the National Travel Pride Award and then so many people, so many doors became available as in regards what kind of area do you want to go down and I, I was lucky at the time because when I won my award for drama and entertainment, Cindy Joyce, I don't know if you know her now but she's pretty, she's pretty popular around Ireland, she's a traveller activist and she's a representation and she does all these kind of talks and things, but she, she's up to get her law degree and she's up to get her degree as a solicitor and everything. So she's big up there and she's a fantastic advocate for travelers and let her know that we're here with her all the way, you know. Um, but she was winning her award for speaking at that time under the education category. So me and her got talking in and I told her how much I wanted to change what I was seeing on a daily basis. And then... I kept saying, do you know the issue with travellers? When more travellers, when I kept speaking to them, they kept telling me that it was their mental health that was messing them up, that they didn't know who they were in their head, that they were, some of them felt threatened and some of them felt forced into a lifestyle that they didn't want. They went along with it because of families. Thousands of them, thousands. You would even, and I'm not even over-exaggerating. Thousands of men about this thing. You know? And they kept saying that it was their head and they couldn't get away from their issues and they're being married at 18 and 19 with a girl that they don't know because it's an arranged marriage from seven years old and you have to build a life with this person and become parents with this person. And some of them loved it, but there's the other side of it too. Flip it a coin, some of them couldn't handle it. They couldn't handle the pressure and everything like that. It comes with what you're, 
you're doing. And they just couldn't. And unfortunately, some of them would start cutting their hands. Some of them would turn to drugs as a way of numbing their pain because it's a mental issue. It's a physical issue. And some of them, unfortunately, you know, made a bad move and made one mistake too much and took their own life, unfortunately. And it's still happening today. You know, we had 14 uh, suicides during the lockdown, all traveler people, you know, and it's not even covered, it's not even reported. Wow. No, so it's 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 a it's it's a silent killer, like it really is. So I said to Cindy that I wanted to change that and I wanted to get on on the mental health issue, address it. And then as myself, we went some you go through your dark times in 2017. We my parents split up after 20 years. My granny had passed away and I had broke my fiance, childhood sweetheart, uh, of seven years. So it was a horrible time, a horrible, all it was, you know, they say it comes in trees. It really, really does. So it, it came in three that time and I was very depressing time. Um, and I was able then to get myself through that after months and months of philosophical, basically detoxing myself and understanding my persona and understanding of what's going on and understanding that you might just be another one on the list that your life because you weren't able to deal with but the other ones before you were only 10 times stronger than me, mature and successful, couldn't deal with, you know? Mm-hmm. So I used my experience of getting through that to then go on and to change the next person that couldn't handle the mental health issue because I can talk to you now. I went through it. I understand you. So let me hear your story and maybe we can break it down to the issues and talk about it in a normal and respectable way instead of you going and doing the ultimate thing and taking your life and basically being selfish because in a way it is being selfish. I know they have no choice, but their family's life is ruined forever. He never even thought about his mother. He never even thought about his father, father, his sister. And seeing their brother quit then, what example is that in them? When they go through the bad hardship, are they going to quit because their brother quit? Wow. Uh, I didn't expect it to go there. <laughs> That's I how I feel. I'm sorry I talk so emotionally about it. Like, no, 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 there's, there's no apology necessary. You're here in a very safe space. Thank you, ladies, you know, for being here with us. Uh, um, That's what I wanted to change because I, I lost two friends to suicide as well, you know, so... I, I, I'll, t- I'll tell you the, the word that jumped out for me, perhaps for others here in the cafe, is selfish. Um, you know, it's, it's a really interesting choice of word uh, for that ultimate decision. And I would never say that about that subject unless I felt I was educated and experienced enough to even talk on that. Yeah, like, no, I, I'm, therefore, I'm, otherwise I would just keep my mouth shut. No, come here, I'm, I'm applauding it. I'm applauding it. It's, it's a, it's a yeah. very interesting word. But then from there, that's a thing about the mental health. And I then started, um, the, when the brothers, uh, they started putting on these conferences and talks. And they would ask me then when I talk about my experience of, of mental health and I did, and then it kept happening. I kept getting recognition for it. And then there was these little conferences coming up because what happens, the traveler organized, the travel communities, the organizations that overlook each town organizes these different types of conferences every year. And we all meet up and we go through and we break down and we'll have our different speakers giving different talks on what it's like as a traveler running a company in Cork. And then you got the Offaly other movement and you have the Cal- to Galway and so forth. Um, and everyone will come up and give speeches and talks about what's going on and under the issues of how you're dealing with racism, how you're dealing with mental health, how you're dealing with stereotypes, how you're dealing with uh, employment and education and all of these variants. So uh, every time then when there will be the, the annual meeting, I would call, I would be blessed luckily enough to call, to be called. And uh, there, we would go up there and it would be a fantastic day. Like Kerry Travelers, we, we would fly up on the flight because you can get from bar four here, you can get a flight to Dublin. So we would get the 7 a.m. flight to Dublin. We'd be there at 8. We'd have to be in, in the conference hall in Leinster House at 9, give our talk, and then, you know, we'd fly back on the day home, and we'd meet all these people then in Leinster House, and it was crazy to be in the house of Euractus and seeing it on TV for so long. And I, I have a couple of pictures of videos on my Facebook of, of, of our time there. And it's just... Um, we, I'm in the meeting of meeting 40 or 50 different TDs and ministers and well, luckily enough for Eileen Flynn as well, the first travel senator as well, to be in the doll. I'm so proud of her. We're right behind you, sister, on that, you know. So well done to her. Um, but that's just an 
Been been all shining it. through. <laughs> all shining through here is pride in every sense. You know, absolute pride in who you are as a man and as a as a as a man from the travel community, as an Irish man from the travel community. It's just wonderful. It's just wonderful. It's joyous. Thank you. And, Thank and you. it really is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And um, I, 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 you know, here, here's the problem. We're I'm, we're under pressure. I'm under pressure time wise, right? Uh, uh, not that I have to go, but I'm conscious of these lovely people who come to the cafe every every. Yeah, wow, we've had any look at the time. Yeah, I, and, and, <laughs> and I, I, I'd lost track. Not that I'm in a rush or anything. No, I'm just I'd be here. delighted to sit here all day. You know, I, heard be bells, I heard the bells chiming up in the village here, uh, chiming to us. I said, right, we better. We better we, do you know we need to have the further conversation at some point in the future? But for, yes. today, for today, let's just let's just bring this one around, if that's okay. Um, two quick questions, very quick. Yes. If before we go to the Princess Shelley part, apparently some people's favorite part of the show. Just putting that out there, right? Before we go there, uh, two quick questions. What Martin Mahan are you taking with you from COVID that you found in COVID you're not letting go of? Um. And and from because we didn't have the most simplest you see we we had the worst year ever like we've had i've had the worst year of my life you know not not regarding because i was in a lockdown but because my youngest brother was in a really bad car crash nine months ago and myself and my family have been up in temple street hospital in dublin since the accident on 26th of june and he was three months in a coma and everything and this is 11 year old boy so we've had the worst year ever. Like I'm even when I talk about it now, it's like, you know it's very upsetting. Um, but uh, we're back down home now a year. Sorry, a month since the start of of April. Um, but the tears that we've shed the last nine months and the heartbreak and the loneliness of spending Christmas and New Year's in a hospital warm with my brother who has to learn how to walk and talk again. You know, and the hospital then taking us to court on top of that as well, because they didn't think he would have a full quality of life. I don't know what the hell ever gave them that right to think that they could ever decide that. My brother was nine weeks in ICU and thank the Lord above got out of it. But they were trying to basically take us to court so that my brother wouldn't be treated if he ever needed ICU again, because they didn't think he'd have a full quality of life. Despite the fact that they told us that he would pass away in ICU, never wake up in a coma, never eat, never recognize us. And he's proven all the wrong in time. Yeah. Wow. And that's, that's, that's little Francis. Wow. How is he today? He's doing well. He's, he, I'm so proud of him. He, like, he, he's a warrior's heart, you know. After started eating food again, thank God, after 10 months. So... And he can now properly shake your hand and he can wave and he's on an exercise bike and he's on a tin table to stand them up, you know, so he is getting there. Wow. And my poor mom, you know, she sleeps with him like every day, like beside his bed every night. She hasn't been home since it happened. And she refused to be. Better. Uh, Martin, man, I didn't expect that. I'm sorry. I, I've asked that question 106 times now. Uh, on the Coffee 11 show, and uh, I wasn't expecting that. So, blessings to you and your family. You mentioned God. Uh, God's a big part of your life. Um, I, I, always, I always see religion and faith as, as I said about the other, about acting, it's a gift. You either have it or you don't have it. You can try and, of course, you can go and you can become a follower and pray and find God in your own life at any time. But it's that deep connection that I have, that my family has, that I know wasn't put on me. I was born with it. Like, I know in my heart God has given me a vocation. I know that. I speak with God. Like I, I, That's what I was even trying to tell the doctors. You know, they, kept, they were telling me, like, your brother is going to die. And I was like, no, because I could hear God here. And I know you're thinking I'm crazy. You don't have to believe me, and I don't expect anyone to, because it doesn't change my experience that, you know, if I wanted to sugarcoat it or exaggerate it, I'd be saying, Jesus appeared in front of me, and he told me, and I shook his hand, and he showed me the, the thing in his hands. No, but I felt God in my heart, and that's all that matters. I felt God telling me every single time that I would say, oh my God, my brother is not going to make it. Right. It would be like, 
how would I describe it? It's like you're stuck at sea, you're lost at sea, and you think you're going to drown, and then a small little wave just comes right back and takes you right back to shore, out of nowhere. That's it's like a random arm on your shoulder. That's how I see God. Yeah. He was. It was like a feeling. It's sudden burst of energy in my heart telling me, "No, your brother's going to be okay." Every single time at that particular doubt would appear in my head. Only then would that feeling appear. Yeah. And now I know you can think that's my mind working or whatever, and you're everyone's uh -oh. entitled to their beliefs, but that's my experience. I can only tell you from how I felt God trying to talk to me. And you know what? And, and God wants you to tell it as you see it. So thank you for that. Thank you. you. Know what? Martin, thank you. it's been an absolute joy having you here on the Capitol. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, we didn't, didn't even get... you're, not, you're not going anywhere. It gets even better from here. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently. Right. Delighted. Delighted. Oh, it's just here for a second. Princess Shelley, over to you. Thank you. Martin, what a wonderful, wonderful guest. You really, really are. It is such a pleasure. And, you know, I'm joining you here. I was um, still working away listening. And you've this most you, beautiful use of the language, the English language. You're just... You, you, I could listen to you forever. Just thank you so much for, for your visit to our humble little cafe today. I'm going to share a few comments with you um, that we have, people have popped in with the chat. So we kicked off by saying so, um, just hello and happy Friday and everything like that, which was lovely. Um, and then we got Jill St. John um, popped in and said, best of luck, Martin. Wishing you the best of luck. Great to have you my here. He's my old neighbour. Oh, very good. Very good. So Jim had to best of luck, Martin. Tim Kelly said, sunshine on a rainy day. Delighted to be back in the cafe. So uh, again, just a lot of appreciation to be listening in on the conversation you've had today with Colin, you know. Um, so we were talking about at the very start, Ger, it's great to have you here. Ger is um, going to be on the cafe, Coffee at 11 show very, very soon, I understand. Ger was said, um, it's so refreshing to hear someone praise their early primary school years because you said what a wonderful for primary school um, experience that you'd had and like that I was nodding away I could see lots of nodding and heartfelt feelings across people's faces in the cafe um, that she said that it was just so nice that you had that um, and then Paul said great to have you here in the cafe Paul um, for the Coffee at 11 show um, that's it give Martin a wave there you were saying how in school you know that the policies were in your favour but there's always going to be some ex negative experiences and it didn't I loved the way you said it you said it didn't reflect the school's policies and the nobody can prevent those negative experiences and you know Paul said about around that point we all have filters through which we listen and being aware of that is the base of compassion so um so it really was like that you you come from such a heart-centered place and your own understanding and forgiveness um really just came through very early in the interview Martin you know Thank you. um Jesus. James said you were talking about race and Colin was asking you about how you had um, an interesting use of words around the human race and the different different sectors and communities within it. And James said uh, we're all the human race, just unique backgrounds. And a comment I'm going to share in a few minutes comes back to that that Eamon just shared. I'm looking forward to sharing with you. Sarah Ward couldn't agree more with James. She said, yeah, agree more. Ger then said, Martin, what a beautiful story of moving child up to sixth year. That was when you were talking about about that 13 year old and the marriage and the understanding from the principal you know um i really feel that i'd love to, i'd love to meet that principal because he sounds again he <laughs> he has his heart in the right place and i do find so so often that that is so much of that is lost you know so much of that is lost today with the bureaucracy that that happens in school you would yeah, it's true it's true and it's, it's not until people make a small little comment and notice it that everyone is like, oh, yes, yes, oh my God, yes. Do you know? Yeah, absolutely. He, he, he sounds like a wonderful, wonderful man. You he certainly was. made him a hero today. Um, so so Yitka says that, great to have you here again, Yitka. Yitka sent me the most fabulous princess headphones. I'll share them with you next week, guys, in the Coffee and Living show. I'm on her hair is beautiful. Tell her I said her hair is amazing. <laughs> so thank you for those, Yitka. So she says, I spent two years in close contact with people after spinal injuries. It has turned my life upside down and inside out. My 20-year-old self had a great teaching there about how we perceive people and about treating people, regardless of their appearance their background their abilities and disabilities and that sounds like you really really have that martin don't you 
Yes. You know, it's just there. It's running through your veins. It's running through your blood. And it is just who you are. And the person that we've been extremely fortunate to have with us today in the Coffee at 11 show. Oh, you're very kind. Jesus, Shirley. Thank you. I'm not kind. I'm just telling the truth, Martin. This is my <laughs> job to share the vibe in the cafe. And this is what everyone is saying. It's not just me. This is everyone who's listened in, who's turned up today yeah. because they wanted to listen to your conversation. And this is what they're saying. Ger loves your family values. Katrina says that she loves that acting is your vocation. So she loved that acting is your vocation. And Donald said, motive dust. Colin must have been reading or listening to the pale blue dot. Colin, where are you? <laughs> Thank you. Big thumbs up there from Colin. So at that point, uh, Martin, Eamon has shared some of, like there was a message there um, on the impact of mental health and suicide in the community and the importance of looking for support. So he, Eamon has shared in um, some posts there that you've put so I'm sure what we what you can do and I'm sure you all know at this stage is click on the three links and you'll see that um you'll be able to save the links that he's put up your Facebook and all those all those links there well, it's on are. on Facebook is it yes he has that okay, link okay. sorry I thought you meant here and you'll see that so um, James said never just join the chorus Martin no small roles only small actors which I love exactly. that sentence. exactly <laughs> it's the truest statement ever ever said see he would get it <laughs> and then he said, welcome to our little group of oddballs, Martin, as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, like I say, I'm missing a few of the comments and I'm so sorry, everybody. Eamon then also popped in the link there to the from 2014, you winning the culture section of the National Traveller Pride Awards. So um, if you want, that's in the Trilly today. Um, so if you want to have a look at that, guys, click that link. Eamon does such a wonderful job of introducing us beyond the conversation you've had today to the man beneath the, um, the conversation we've listened in on so thank you Eamon you do such a wonderful job thank you Eamon and thank you for that warming up at the start as well you know that exercise well done very, in yeah. very intuitive so my pleasure Martin you're very welcome so then Marion Shanley Marion it's such a pleasure to have you here Hello. in the cafe today hi Marion I love that jacket <laughs> <laughs> Marion <laughs> Beautiful message and chat, and I love this. We are all connected by golden, invisible Irish threads. And um, Eamon and Ger were both say, thanking Marion for such beautiful words for that. So um, thank you, Marion, for that thank comment. You. That's, that's a beautiful way of phrasing it, actually. Well, wow. it is, that, isn't it? It is. So then Donald said, um, "Hi, Donald. Regular in the cafe, Martin. He always comes in and listens. And I love sharing Donald's comments. They're always so insightful." He said. Find yourself a person would be a great phrase from anyone. He repeated what you had said, Martin, you know, but especially a 26 year old, the awareness and the politeness, respect and courage that you exude are palpable. You are making a major contribution, Martin. And Donald speaks on behalf of all of us. So um, thank you so much for that. Thank you, Donald. Thanks. Jesus, thank you. Wow. Um, so Jer also said um, we send our love to Francis all the peace and love um, possible and Eamon said what you were describing about what God you know you could feel that he was he was going to be okay and what the doctors were saying wasn't accurate and Eamon said what you were describing is unwavering faith yeah. and he also went on to say and I loved this and I purposely saved it and now Eamon said Martin you are one of those people and listen carefully to this Martin you're one of those people that transcends your conditions and circumstances through experience courage wisdom humor and your humility you're just so humble you have a platform to make such a difference now you are not only a credit to the traveler race you are a shining example of inspiration and hope to the human race and um, so yeah I, I, that's a wonderful wonderful comment thank you so much wow. for that. I see. wow that's that's very touching like like i'm overwhelmed hearing it honestly i'm only saying that i'm even saying it. i'm only saying it. It. thank you so much thank you just tell them it like it is thank you and you so Paul then, nearly just to finish off sharing these wonderful comments, um, Martin, Paul said, Martin, thank you for your soul-bearing vulnerability and thought-provoking chat, your courage and commitment to make changes truly inspiring. And I look forward to following your work. Heart opening, just listening to you. Blessings you, to your brother. I will light a candle for you all. Bravo. So thank you, Paul. And I can see you there. And it's wonderful to have you here in the cafe. James said, Martin, you've the heart of a warrior and the soul of a poet. How come I didn't make the list of your favourite actors? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> thank you for that, James. Thank well, tell him I said he's my, he's my favourite onstage actor anyway. There, there you go. You just told him yourself. He's the original Max Bialystock anyway. That's all I'll say. 
And Joanne Callahan, lovely to have you here in the cafe, Joanne. Um, she says, Martin, you're a force of nature, unleashed, unstoppable, and an incredible stand for your community. So, um, so yeah, thank, thank you for thank that, you. Joanne. Thank you. Have we anybody who would like to ask Martin a question direct? Pop your hand up. I'm on two screens, but I can see you if you I'd raise your to, hand. Any question at all? I'd love to. I'd love to. Anything at all? Yeah, Donald, where are you in this, please? Uh, I, I would say that, that serious pain, serious pain and loss either closes us down or opens us up. And you're a great example, Martin, of someone who has opened up. Okay. As a, a partly, I'm suggesting partly as a result of, of pain and loss. Mm. It is, it is. And, Try to uh, switch it to an advantage. Yeah. And I feel like apologizing for what you encountered in secondary school for the the racism and the prejudice and i have an unusual have an unusual question to ask you go ahead i'd be glad to take it have you ever thought that you were lucky i mean lucky in the context that you were lucky that you didn't encounter it earlier in primary school yes yes yeah. Because uh, the boy that I was referring to uh, that had was switched up a year, two years, so that they could get him out of the school quicker so he could get married, he was experiencing that. Mm. So I don't mean that wasn't like it was happening in that school the odd time, but it just never happened to me. So I can only speak from my experience. But yes, very lucky. Very lucky. And I don't know why they never said it to me, because I was a record. As, as, as bad and as regrettable and as painful as it was, it was probably better than it was better than encountering it in, in primary school, I suppose. Yes, um, I mean, I don't, do you know, when you say that, and I, and I won't never be nothing but honest, but if I had experienced it in primary, I probably would have been more ready for it in secondary because I probably would have asked my parents why yeah. is it to me why are these looking at me when I haven't done nothing and they sit me down and break it to me gently I guess and um, I would have been more ready for it but yeah God didn't want it that way so yeah, yeah. thanks Martin uh, Donald always Donald always a lovely uh, lo lovely insightful comment and, and, and questions from Donald so thanks for being here Donald it's a pleasure having you in the cafe I know that Katrina has a little question for you Katrina will you unmute and ask Martin your question thanks Shelley um, Martin I actually messaged Shelley privately to tell her a few times I welled up listening to you we've never met before today but I feel so proud of you like right in that play that you did at that age, that was that's just amazing. And you're a force to be reckoned with. And I have no doubt like we are going to hear more from you in the future. But I have a question um, and I'm going to put you on the spot. Oh, before uh -oh. I ask you, though, <laughs> I'm going to send you all these comments. So don't worry about saving them. I'll email these comments to you. Please later do, because I can see something in the chat here where it says 48 or something, but yes. I didn't click on it. You can read them at your leisure later on, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Have you a little piece that you can pull out of your back pocket and perform for us right now to camera? Just a little thing. Um, I should have. I have a poem. I wrote a no, poem about it. what happened with my brother. If I could get it on my phone. Um. <laughs> Kat, that's a wonderful question. And while you're getting that on the phone, I'd like to, and Kat, thank you for that lovely sentiment and a great question. And I'm delighted to, that you put our guest on the spot and he's going to respond. Uh, but I'd like to bring in James Finnegan for a moment, just to fill in the, fill in the space. James. Hey, James. You know, you, come here, you go back and look up, find that poem on your phone there. Hey, Martin, right. how are you? I'm not too I bad. What you, what you see here is exactly what you get. Martin Martin is, is a young man of deep feelings and deep faith. But he's also a, a, a remarkably focused and dedicated actor, writer. He, I mean, he hasn't mentioned about the RTE show yet. No. He hasn't mentioned about just filming a Bond villain. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> um, Yes, he's a man. He, he, 
family, family, I would family and faith is uh, a Martin's lodestones. That's what keeps him on track, and uh, he's a remarkable young man. It's it could have been so easy for him to go down the bitter route and the uh, take take all those things to heart. And he's had his own difficulties, which he freely admitted in the talk today. Uh, the fact that he's come through them, the fact that he's here, a representative not only of his family, not only of his his grouping, but also as a young man in a modern Ireland, seeking to make his way and trying to make it a little bit better for the people coming behind. Uh, really well said, really well oh, said. Jesus. Jesus. James, thank you. I'm humbled by those words. You on the, on the so bus there, putting you on the spot. Yeah. And I just want to say to James as well, um, he doesn't realise how much when we were working together of how much of an inspiration he was to me. Yeah, he's an How much of a gentleman that he always stayed, even in rehearsal, even in everything. James never changed who he was. Uh, and I've seen some people, you know, and you think you know them, but James, is, see what, what you get. He's the most humblest, loveliest guy. That's the end. Absolutely, and, and we and we agree. We agree. Katrina, back to you. A back to you to introduce your your question one one more time, Katrina, please. So I want to see the performer. We've heard the speaker. Now I want to see the performer. Okay. So I mean, this poem. I'm wondering this, since you asked me, and and bear with me now because I, I haven't really read it to anyone. Because I just like I'd, I'd be that person that I'm gonna go through something as traumatic as what happened with my brother that I'd have to write something. Otherwise, I'd have to probably force myself to write something. So I wrote a poem. It's only a couple of lines. It's nothing special. It's not in um, Seamus Heaney level or anything. <laughs> um, but it's called These Bloody Days because, it's, excuse me, it's how I saw my situation. It's only nine or ten lines. These Bloody Days by Martin Mann. These Bloody Days have broken my heart. My lust, my youth, condemned apart. For your smile alone, I would do stuff never known. To get you back to the day when everything was okay. How far I'd fall back in time to hear you smile or tell me you love me one more time. God is deciding what will happen today. He is the He is taking the lead. Mama told me what my mom told me take what you want. I took heed. <laughs> Wow. That I could put on paper. That's why I never released it or did or even told anyone I had it. It's just me getting feeling closure of the situation. That's why these bloody days broken my heart, my lust, my youth. And the wow, Martin, thank you so much for sharing yeah. that with us. Like it's it's a beautiful gift that will never be underestimated. You've shared it with us here. And thank you, Katrina, for thinking of it. She'd messaged, do you think he'd share a few lines? And we oh, wouldn't have been so bold as to think that you may have shared something with us. One, so original that's never been heard. And two, something so heartfelt. So Jesus, I like the lines. You know, now, I haven't even read that in months now. And, you know, I'm trying to even justify to myself as to what I was trying to say, you know. Yeah. God's in control, take the lead. Mama told me, take what you want, I took heed. So I was taking her advice for life by letting yeah. God decide the future. You know, that's what I was trying to say. I don't know. No. Beautiful. Martin, thank you so, so much. And thank you, Katrina, for your wonderful question. Colm, I will, with that, I've got to swallow hard that emotion, <laughs> get it back down and get <laughs> Um, a swallow heart, Martin Diamond, absolute legend. And thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, thank you. Um, and thank you for having I've me. Definitely, I've definitely benefited from listening into your chat today. Um, Colm, back over to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Shelley. Thank you for that. Um, and it, is, it, it actually is my, one of my favourite parts of the show, too, because uh, prior to the Princess Shelley bit, I'm engaged with the with the guest, and uh, so I don't get to see all that wonderful magic that's happening in the cafe. And by the way, that is the magic in the cafe. It's it's uh, myself and Martin could have pre-recorded this, and it would have been <laughs> we, we could have it would have been boring. Yeah, this time. this is just reminding along like this is an order run already. <laughs> this is wonderful. So, so look, it's great. And the fact that we do it live in front of a live audience, that brings the magic spark into what we do here. Um, but it has been a truly beautiful experience. I, I, was, I was somewhat disappointed, though, between us, Martin, we could have pushed Shelley just that little bit no. more. 
would have been snots and tears. It would have been great. <laughs> <laughs> but, but we didn't, right? Anyway, next time. That's the, that's the measure of a really good show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I, I okay. might just, before I head away, um, I just give a, a shout out to, um, and just rightly so, because um, I know we didn't delve into it, but I just wanted to give a bit of a shout out um, to Cusack Studios, because uh, I know they're watching. Um, uh, we're after film, we're in the process of, of making a fan made 007 movie. Uh, it, it's really, really cool. Um, but all original characters besides 007 and M. Um, but it's an original script and it's it's not a copy of, of the 007s at all. It's just taking the 007 character. And it, it, I wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have signed a part of it if I didn't think it was going to be a legit thing. If it wasn't going to be kind of a joke, a party. And, but no, we uh, the story is phenomenal. Uh, the story is is written by this American writer that knows the, the, the production. So we've been filming. It's been set back since last year because of COVID and it's constant, constant setbacks. And we've had to change the story and rewrite it and change the director. But we're slowly getting there. So it's called I Expect You to Die, based off the new Bond movie. Uh, well, not based off it, but No Time to Die is the new one released this okay. year. And our one is I Expect You to Die. <laughs> <laughs> It's, Which it's, will, it sounds intriguing already. It's it's so, it's really really cool. Um, we filmed on different locations through the, uh, the country um, in Limerick, and I'm back on the second of June for the last day of filming on that. Fantastic, very Some exciting. Locations in Dublin and on location in Cork, and that will be out later this year. And uh, keep an eye out for myself as well um, on RTE later this year, and I can't go into much detail about that because uh, the studios haven't given me permission yet to reveal exactly what it is, but look out for an, uh, something big coming this year with some of the top industry heads um, with associated with Ireland. And, and, well, that's exactly where you where you deserve to be, top industry heads, leading the charge for sure. Let's just say, I can I can say John Connors is involved um, and working with him and meeting my, my hero. You know, sometimes they say you meet your hero and you're disappointed. This was everything and more. Uh, this was he was everything I thought and, and more, and we had a chance to work on something special that would be on the air later this year, at some we, point. We look forward to it, and 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 when when you when you're able to talk about it, send us a note and we put it out into the camp. yes. Yes, yes. it's just it's very top secret yet at the moment That's because not, we legit don't have permission to even post. I have I picked it. Sure. That I can't even post anything. No, no, no problem. I forget it. Come here. I'm really conscious of time, but uh, you mentioned Cusacks, and I see Teresa in the cafe, and I'm wondering, is that that's my that's my mother? Ah, oh my goodness, even better. Teresa, it, hello, Teresa hello. Mahan, would you like to unmute and say hello to your son? Tell us how it proud. Could be her now. It could be her. See, that is my mom's name. It might be her. Hi, Martin. How are you? <laughs> You're live from the hospital right there. <laughs> I'm live from the hospital in Cashin Wall in Tralee, County Kerry. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Mahan. Teresa Mahan. I'm delighted yes. to ask the question. Lovely to meet you. Are you do, do you fancy? And same here, Mr. O'Brien. How are you, sir? No, there's no Mr. O'Brien. Mr. O'Brien's my dad. I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, my mom, you have to forgive her now. She's not used to this kind of interview takes. She's so Teresa, shy. Teresa, would you like to are you are you interested? Are you are you comfortable turning on the camera? Say hello say hello. Oh, do I have to? Okay, I'll show you myself. <laughs> oh hello. There you go. I love it. <laughs> the beautiful face behind the voice. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, that's lovely. It's lovely. Teresa, it is Hi, so Martin. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I'm I'll so see you later. Martin. I'm so proud of you. See you later. No, no, stay, stay where you are. Don't rush away. Oh, stay, 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 stay. <laughs> Teresa, it's lovely to meet you. It is lovely to meet you. You have done a wonderful so job on this young man and your family. So uh, congratulations to you. And, Thank you. And all of your community. I mean, you must be so proud. You must be so proud today. I'm proud of seeing him grown into the young man that he is, Colm. You know, because he was my backbone to everything, you know, and when life wasn't and life put us hard, Matt was my rock to, to step on. So I'm so proud of him. I'm 100% behind him and being coming from a traveler community, 
I'm proud to be one to the backbone. I'm absolutely proud. I'm not going to deny my son. We're, we're not, we never deny the culture. But I want him to be seen as a person and also as an actor instead of be seen as let down, you know, I just want him to be seen as Martin Mahan. Yeah. I don't want him to be seen all Martin of his culture, you know. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, culture is yeah. there and we all will be oh. and we'll all will stand up for her rights. But I want for Martin to be seen as Martin Mahan. More than know? just more than just an activist, although she wants me to be an activist, she just wants people to see that I am a human as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's lovely. Yeah. It's lovely. And, and, and the pride, the pride in the traveller community, Martin, that you exude, we can see it and hear it in your mother. That's where it came from. Uh, Teresa, wonderful. You're such a lovely role model for your family. You just been busy there now with my brother in the hospital, but you can't hear it. <laughs> I'm just a bit busy with my small little fella. Oh, do you want to see him? Ask him if he wants to see Francis. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, sure. Show him what he looks like. Show him, show him how he's doing. Show him fancy hair now, you see? Hey, Francis. This is my little boy when everyone said that he couldn't make it. And he, else, you know, this fella has a heart of a lion, like his brother. Proud of you, baby. I, I love you. So proud of him. He's out in his chair now, so it's fine. Wow, 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 wow. So, so we're still here and we're still fighting. You know, family means family means a lot to us, um, Callum. You know, and mm -hmm. as you said about um, the COVID, I wish COVID never happened because yeah. COVID makes that Ireland the world actually, yeah. and it makes you think of what you have and who and who you could speak to, and it it puts your mind in a place. Can I go out and see this person, or can I not speak to this person, or I, uh, you be afraid to speak to someone in case you think that they have something, yeah. and you know, and it it makes up people's lives, the jobs, the income, and I can understand that from a personal a personal way. But yeah. over the year we had COVID didn't even enter our heads because yeah. we were fighting a bigger thing than COVID, you know. And please sure. God, COVID now everything is under control. Just it's just like a trend. It's going to take a time, everything to get well. So I just yeah. want to say thank you for giving my son this opportunity. Oh, uh, Teresa. Uh, Teresa, it's been our pleasure. Our absolute Thank you, Mom. Thank I'm, you. I'm just, being busy with, I'm just being busy with my son here. Yeah, this is good. Go, 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 back to go back to him. Go back to him. Uh, yeah. Teresa, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much for having God me. I'm glad I look so. I wasn't even cleaned up. I'm sorry. Stay safe. God bless. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness, my goodness. Wow, that was special. I'm so glad you got to see him anyway. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Martin Mann, um uh I knew this was gonna be special, I just didn't know quite how special. Um <laughs> Yeah, I really didn't. So, so thank you for being here, my friend. And yeah, thank uh, you for having me. I'm so you, grateful, Colin. You, you, you've won. You've won a whole new bunch of uh, fans and and supporters. <laughs> supporters. So, um, you keep going, making a difference, and um, and and change the world one one conversation at a time. I will. I do need to finish the show properly before our, our Katrina will kill me, if I may. So, I just want to thank you, Martin Mann, for being here. I want to thank the wonderful team that uh, makes this possible, Princess Shelley. Big heart emoji for producing today's show. Eamon Smith, hashtag Kerry Guru for keeping us safe and sound and of sound mind. Uh, we have Tim Kelly for his awful Friday joke from which we <laughs> can only get better uh, and also for assisting Eamon in uh, keeping us safe and secure here. And of course, Katrina O'Brien who makes this just uh, tops and tails it beautifully and, uh, and puts together for an ever-growing global audience, which is, has exceeded 17 million at this stage, which is ridiculous. But we're just here. You know, we're just being told to do this. We're doing it, and it's not up to us where it goes. Um, but I want to thank Wigwam for making it happen, and I want to thank the Limerick Post for uh, supporting us in Season 4, keeping Limerick posted. Hashtag Limerick. Yes. But as always, the last word goes to our special guest and today. It's been a very special guest, Martin Mahan. Namaste. Thank you so much. Um, for being on the show for this opportunity, Colm, and thank you for everyone who so patiently said some.
beautiful, beautiful, kind words. And you don't even realize how much they mean to me. And for taking the time to listen to the story and for your prayers for my brother. Thank you all so much. And I hope God keeps you safe and you all stay okay. And you all have the best year. And that we look behind COVID and get on with a better future. Mm-hmm.